Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for watching. If you get a chance, please like and subscribe. And in this video, I wanna show how I created my circle backdrop. I made this over a year ago, and when I looked online, I saw a lot of different styles of people creating them and see the line between them. The reason you get that a lot is because a lot of stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, they only sell um, sheets of plywood or any type of material. They only sell it in a four foot by eight foot. So if you wanna make like a seven foot circle, you're gonna have to have a line. So I wanted to find a way around this. Uh, I actually tried three different types of material. I tried like an MDF type of material, didn't work. I tried a foam material backing. Uh, this, you could still see the seam. I actually used um, thin plywood, laminate board, and I was able to cover the seam up. Let me show you how I actually got it to work. I had just ordered some drape backdrops for some draping. This was over a year ago, and I actually was able to incorporate that into my stand. So you'll see how I can use the same draping that we use for all our events. They actually work for our circle backdrop. I haven't seen anyone do it like ours. Now I'm gonna show you how I set this up. Uh, it takes not even five minutes to really set up the whole backdrop. Let me get started. So I have three of these, open, close, push that in, push it tight. So we have a total of four, one at the top, two in the middle, and then one at the bottom on the concrete pipe. I found these in the electrical aisle for Conduit uh, at Home Depot. Okay. And I just, See if you can see in there. I just screwed it with a small screw to the back. And those pipes to the drape, they just go into the bottom plate. Here's the concrete bucket. We have a tie right here in case we need a tie sometimes if we're outdoors. We have the other one that's connected to the concrete and it holds this pipe still. And then we have one right there in the middle and then one at the top I got a tie. And this is just the backing that we do. And if it's indoors, we just do this. As you can see, there's, um, you don't see anything back there. There's the pipe sticking out and that's where we tie it to the balloon garland. But we also have a double pipe connector. So if someone doesn't want that and they just want the circle backdrop, which we've rented it just as a circle backdrop, we use the half a pipe, which gives it enough strength to be on the indoors. But if the other hard part is when you do outdoors, especially here in Texas, you get a lot of crazy weather. It's rainy, windy, thunderstorm, sunny, all in like a, a two hour period. So uh, we actually have, if we do the balloon garland, we have, we actually, and we're outside, we actually have a separate one that we connect to these on the side. And then we run a pipe going down and we put the other base off. That's only if we're outdoors and the weather's going to be crazy, then we'll, We'll do that and that helps connect it and it's given really good stability just because of the weight. And if you see back here, uh, these are just screws with tape in them. And then um, all we do with that is really um, when we hang a sign on the back, we use fishing line and we just tie it to the back or the balloon garland, whatever we tie in the back. Uh, sometimes we have it numbered in case we need to be, we'll try it out before the event and we'll know, okay, it's on 20 and 8 and that puts it right in the center of the circle. So as soon as we get there, we already know, just do 20 and 8 and it'll put it in the center. We'll do 20 and 8 and it'll put it right in the center. What I like about our setup is this is literally the pipe and drape system, the one that people use for their grass backdrop, that we use for our grass backdrop, that we use for any backdrop. It's the one that you see on Amazon that I've used. Uh, so it's interchangeable. You don't have to buy any more pieces or anything. And then with this, this is our um, the little plate I made for the backing. I just cut four one by twos, and I just stacked them just to give them a little more lift at a little angle, and they came out legit. And another thing I wanted to show you was the size. So for this, a normal door, uh, a standard door where I'm at is going to be 80 inches high by 32 inches wide and I wanted to be able to we can um, keep it together and transport it so I can maximize the space that we use 
without having to split it in half. So a lot of times when you see people do a circle backdrop, it's two separate pieces. So they take it apart and when they put it together, that's when you see that gap. And if you look at mine, you don't, you don't see any gap. There is two separate pieces, but you don't see it because it, it's together, it's one solid piece. And so I wanted to maximize the height I could. So I knew if a door is 80 inches and I could tilt it at a little bit of an angle, um, I tested it, I wanted to see how the, I mean the length of the door is at an angle from corner to corner and then I made it just about an inch shorter than So this backdrop is 78 inches so it'll fit in most doors just straight through. On some doors that are even smaller because you never know where you're going into, I can tilt it at an angle and still I've never had any problem. And when I actually made it the 78 inches and I put it together, it didn't look right. It still felt a little short so that's where the reason I built this little other piece. It gives it about another 3 inches so or almost 4 inches. So instead of 78, it's actually 82 inches, which it's a pretty good height. And also, so when we get our signs, this is the way they look. So we'll get our signs like this. I'll put fishing string and we'll tie it into the back and it'll look just like that. And it pops off really clean, however you want to hold it, like this, like this. Now let me show you the back. So if you look at this corner, all this is is one by twos. What I did is I cut them at an angle, a little 45, and each one just stacked them like that at a corner. And I got some a Craig jig and I screwed them together. So these are screwed together, these are screwed together, screwed together all the way around. They're cut at a, a slight angle. I don't remember the angle, I don't know if 22 or 23, I can't remember exactly the angle I cut these one by twos out. And just at an angle so they all lined up and it created a circle the circle that I wanted and then I I got the plywood which is the thinnest plywood they have this is um a, like f thin flooring super super thin the thinnest plywood they carry uh, I think it was like 10 bucks a sheet I think it was under floor laminate and what I did is I, I used wood glue and I glued this all around it and then to make sure I got a clean cut for the circle I got a router jig and so I got I used a router or you can use a jigsaw and just what I did is um, a string in the center and then drew my circle all the way around so it, it cut off on these and what I did was my router and just um, tied my router to a circle jig circle cutting jig and I just went with my router and cut it all out slowly a little piece like a little section at a time it took me maybe about five passes to completely cut the circle just like if I was making a dining table cut it completely off but you could also use a jigsaw once you get that once you get that circle cut with a that circle line cut in then just get your jigsaw cut the circle all the way around get your sander and just smooth sand everything the glue the wood glue is probably the most important part because it, it I did a, a cross down the center going down and across and so when I glued the, the plywood over this, it held it super strong together. This is the cross section that I did. I have them going across and going up. And again, it's pocket screwed together. All these are pocket screwed everywhere. And then the wood glue keeps it solid, no problem. And this is actually where you see the split on the other side. I'll show you. This is two pieces right here. This side up is one sheet of four foot. And then I needed at least another two and a half foot going down to make my circle complete. So the bottom is a whole nother sheet of plywood. So there was two sheets of that thin laminate. Let me show you the front. So this is the front. I don't know if you can see it, but all across here, that's where the line is. You're not gonna see it. Most people can't even see it right now. But that's where the line is. It's two separate, two separate plywoods. And then all I did is I put that wood filler, the, the pink wood filler that um, it goes on pink and dries wood. I put that here, put some, I sanded it down and then just sprayed it. You can't see nothing. It's one solid piece. Again, if you want to see me put one together, if this video gets 100 likes, share as much as you can. I'll try to create one so you can kind of see what I mean when I'm actually building one. So when we get to the venue, I literally set this up. It takes about five minutes. And then the other person will come in with the balloon garland. They tie it to the side, come around, tie it to the bottom and the other sides. And we're done. This setup, we love doing it. It literally takes 15 to 20 minutes uh, just to get the balloon garland and kind of get it the way they want it, hang the sign, and that's it. So creating the balloon garland, setting up 15 minutes, you're, you're talking about 
less than two hours worth of work. And thank you for watching. If you can, please like and subscribe. That helps the channel grow as fast as we can.